What's going on guys? My name is Carter here and today I've got my 1984 Porsche 944 and today guys I'm going to give you a full walk around of the entire vehicle. So without further ado, let's just get right into this video. Yes guys, so this is my 1984 Porsche 944 and I just want to give you guys a full walk around so you guys know what to expect when buying a 944. That way you guys can see what the engine is like, you can see what the exterior looks like and you get a look at the interior. But just before I get into this video, you guys know me as that fine 44 on TikTok. What are you doing, dog? What are you doing? The dog, dog, dog. But just before I get any further into this video, you guys know me as that fine 44 on TikTok, and this is gonna be my first YouTube video. So I'm so excited to show this off to you guys fully on YouTube, so you guys get a really good understanding of the car. So let's just get right into this thing. So guys, when going over the entire vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and start off with the exterior first, then we'll move into the engine bay, and then we'll move into the interior. Firstly, we're just gonna start up here with the front. You got the iconic Porsche logo right here. We've got the very iconic pop-up headlights here. I as well have my university plate. And then right here, you can see these black bumper guards. This is what they call the US bumper. It's the base model because it's an early model 944. So these came with these two big black bumper guards here. And then you have the fog lights just down here. And then the turn signal is kind of off to the side of the bumper guard. And then a little like a, a side light there. There are a couple variations of the front bumper of the 944. Um, the other one was a Euro bumper. And then they had the turbo bumper, which was later on. Um, there's a lot of going back and forth on which one looks better. I personally think the US base bumper looks the best. Um, it's got these big black bumper guards and then I'll post a picture here of the Euro as well as the turbo bumper. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move to kind of the side of the vehicle here. I wanted to show you guys these massive fender flares that Porsche added from the 924. They basically took a 924 body and instead of making it completely straight throughout the entire body, they added these flares here in the front and then they as well added them back here in the back and it really gives the wheel a nice tucked look here. The fitment in terms of today's standards is not the best, but it does make it look really nice and tucked. And then as well, if you guys can see here, you've got the antenna. This is supposed to go up and down as you turn the radio on inside the car. Mine unfortunately does not work, so I have it all the way down just to give it a more sleek look. And then I'll go ahead and show this now. We've got the mirror here. These are pretty much the same mirrors as any other Porsche from this year They're on the 911. I believe the 928, the 924. This is just kind of your very typical Porsche mirror. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the wheels here. The wheel here is only 15 inches and it's only 215 wide. So not a very big wheel, but it does get the job done pretty good. Um, these specific wheels here are called cookie cutters. There was only two options in 1984 for the 944. Uh, it was the Fuchs and the cookie cutters. These, in my opinion, look a lot better in the Fuchs. Um, they both kind of have this star pattern here, but the Fuchs, instead of kind of going in, they kind of protruded out a little bit more, but they both look really good. Mine are not finished up at all. That's why they look really dirty around the silver and the black is not very black as it used to be. So we're gonna head and move to this side of the car real quick. You see we got the door handle here, and then we got an extra keyhole here. This is actually equipped with the factory alarm system, so this is how you would arm it right here. And then you've got this white trim panel piece right here. A lot of people do remove these because they don't like the look of them, but I'm trying to keep mine completely original, and I do kind of like the look of this, so I'm leaving mine here. And then you've got the window here, as well as another smaller quarter panel window here. This gives a lot of side visibility, which is really helpful. Then as you move a little further back, you can see we got the other wheel back here and you can kind of see the fender flare here. Gives a nice tucked look for this wheel. So now we're gonna go ahead and move to the very rear of the car. You can see right away, we have got these big brick tail lights. These things look, in my opinion, absolutely fantastic on this car. Very 80s very retro look great then as you kind of move down here you can see the big porsche script text right here mine is supposed to have these two black bars here but they're unfortunately missing then as we look at the rear bumper we can see the big black bumper guards that you have in the front of the car there was a euro version of the 944 rear bumper but i personally think either one looks good and i have no complaints on either of them then you can see we have the keyhole here for the rear hatch to open that up. And then we've got the 944 logo right there. And then we've got the license plate in the middle. The 944s also came with an option. Uh, I believe it was a factory option or an outside third party option, I don't know. But it did have a Porsche light bar here in the middle and I'll post a picture here for you guys to see that. Um, either one looks really good. Couldn't complain if I had mine or not, 
but I think either option looks fantastic. Then we've got the big glass hatch here. It also has this rubber spoiler attached to it, which says Porsche kind of engraved in there. Um, these hatches are a pain to work on because they're made of tempered glass. So you have to be extremely careful if you ever take it off or something because you can shatter this really easily. Then as well here, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but there is a plug here because I actually have a rear wiper delete, but usually there is a wiper here on a lot of cars. So it makes it really nice if you're trying to drive in the rain and you can't see out the back. I believe mine was deleted from factory, but I could be wrong about that. I'm not too sure if that was an option or not. Just wanted to give you guys a quick close up of the Porsche text on the rear rubber spoiler. So once we go ahead and get under the hood here, you will see we have a four cylinder engine. This is a two and a half liter four cylinder engine. It only makes 143 horsepower and 137 pound feet of torque. That was the 1984 year. As you went on through the years and stuff and they got older, they did start to make more power because people realized 143 horsepower is not a whole lot on a car. But you can see this is one big two and a half liter four cylinder engine. It is leaned 45 degrees on its side, but everything in here, including the intake, the cam, the head, everything is quite big for a two and a half liter four cylinder. One little interesting fact about this car is it's actually a transaxle. So instead of the transmission being directly behind the engine and connected there, there's actually a massive torque tube that goes all the way to the rear of the vehicle and the transmission is located in the rear. Putting the transmission in the back and the engine in the front gives this vehicle a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. It seems pretty hard to achieve perfect weight distribution on any car today or back then. So the fact that they were able to do it on a car like this kind of blows my mind. So this car is just a really good handling momentum car with only 143 horsepower you're not really going to do any digs you're not going to do any red light you know takeoffs or anything no launches you're pretty much just going to take this to the track and just have some fun i personally love taking this thing out in i personally love taking this thing through the hills and just sending it as hard as i can into corners because it I personally love taking mine through the hills and through the curves and stuff it is a blast to drive if you have the right roads now just go ahead and give a little disclaimer. These do not come with the red and the silver here. Figured I'd give that out there because this is not stock. I had these powder coated. Just don't want you guys to wonder where your guys' colors are. So that way you guys aren't worrying about it. And I will go ahead and do a little handheld walk around of the engine bay. We have the intake here, the cam here. We've got our timing belt and all that stuff down there. The distributor cap, the coolant hose, the intake, which comes through here. It's a pretty big intake for it. And then this is our throttle cable that runs all the way through there. And then we've got like fuel lines and stuff, our fuel rail. And then you can come over here and you can see the Porsche text right there on the cam. And then if you look down there, you got the exhaust. And one little cool thing about this is it actually says the firing order right here, but it's all in German. And then like any other Porsche thing or any other car part, it does have the part number on it. So kind of as you move around the vehicle, you'll see a bunch of stickers with diagrams and warnings. Um, you've got one down here as well. And then you have one up there that says high voltage because there actually is, believe it or not, in these engine bays, there is a little light right there that comes on when you have your headlights on at night. So that way, if you're working on your engine and it's dark out, you actually can turn that on and you can see a little bit better. Here's kind of another little sticker I found for you guys, just as charge level. Pretty cool to see all these little stickers around here. And then as we come on the driver's side of the vehicle, you'll see a little thing that says where it was made and kind of give the exact date. Mine was made in West Germany and it was made in November of 1983. So as we move on to the interior, you can see I have the tan and brown option, as you can see. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start from kind of the doors, move to the back, and then we'll move into the front center section. So on my 944, I actually have electric windows, as you can see. Then as well, you have this little knob down here because the mirrors are actually electric. So you would actually flip this switch right here to select which mirror you would like to adjust. And then you just use that little joystick there and adjust your mirror. And then we've got your little door handle here. Got like an armrest and a little cubby here with some carpet on it. And then we've got the speakers, which mine are aftermarket. So now we're gonna go ahead and move to the rear hatchback here. My carpet is blue because it is very bleached, very sun damaged. I'm just not yet fixed it yet. So just so you guys are wondering, that's why it's like that. So as you come back here, you can see we've got the rear seats here. There are two buttons here on either side. Um, you actually push both those in and you can lay the rear seat down and get a bunch more hatch room. You as well have a very nice cargo cover back here to match the trim. You as well have a little light back here, so if you need some light while you're working at night back here, you can turn that on. 
Just want to give you guys a little bit better of a look at the rear hatch when it's fully opened. This is what it looks like. So as well, mine came with a little sunroof bag because the sunroof up here on top, which I forgot to mention, is completely removable and you can pick this up and then just put it back in here. But there is a bag if you'd like to keep it protected. As well as this big piece of carpet right here is completely removable and there are just a bunch of little like tabs here. You just pop those out and then you can access your spare tire, your jack, your toolkit, and all the information is under there. The only reason I'm not removing mine right now is because this sunroof bag was kind of a pain to get wrapped up in there tightly. So I'm not gonna remove it today, but I will post a picture here, guys. There is a little sticker back here that gives you your whole option list of your 944 and all the information you need to know about it. Then you as well will have these two little cubbies on either side here. They're gonna be very dirty as water can get in them and stuff, but that is how you would change these little side marker lights here on the back. And then you have your sunroof drain as well as a gas overfill drain. In case you accidentally overfill the gas tank here, there is a little line that'll drain down to it. But that's the hatch here. But now let's go ahead and move into the back seat. So here's the back seat of a 944. It is very tight back here. Not a whole lot of room. Mine is dirty because of the sunshade. I've got that there. But there is not a lot of room back here. So I really just say use these as storage, lay them down, do whatever you need to do. But do not put a kid back here. Then as we come up to the front, you can see you got the two leather seats here. Mine have a couple of rips, especially in the driver's side here. We've got a center console here in brown leather, and then we've got an ashtray here. Also a little nibbit, as you open the door, you will see these two little vents here. Not sure what they do, and then there's another little of these vehicle mission stickers here, which is pretty cool to see. So as I said, you got the Astra here, you got a bunch of switches here. Only this one does something, um, the other two are not connected and then this one has no switch. We've got the five speed manual transmission here. Uh, mine was redone, I actually redid this in new brown leather to make it look better because it used to be really disgusting. And then we've got the electronic sunroof notch here and then a balancer here for the speakers. I do not have the stock radio in here, but I do have a cassette player in here. Um, the original radios were Blaupunk uh, cassette players in the 944s. Uh, mine did not have it, and I'm really bummed about it, and I've been trying to track one down, but that is what they come with. I definitely recommend using a cassette player, but I'm also looking to get a Bluetooth radio in the future. Then right here, you have the most confusing climate control system known to man. You have a notch here for certain, you know, your fan speed or whatever, and then you have all these sliders here. I have no idea what they do or anything. I've still never figured them out. But then if you come up here, you have a very simple AC system to use. It's just a knob and you just turn it to how much you want the AC. Then you have a very nicely placed cigarette lighter, except for the fact if you want to charge your phone, you have to run the cable behind the stick shift here and it kind of gets in the way. But then you also have your fog light switch and then you have a brake pad sensor light, a seatbelt light, and then some weird light here, which I'm not too sure what it means. But the fact that a 1984 car has any of these lights really amazes me. Then you have an oil pressure gauge here and a mechanical clock. Mine unfortunately does not work and I'm still trying to figure out why, but it does not. Then over here to the side on the passenger side, you have a glove box here, it kind of comes down. There's also a light in there. Not very big by any means, but one really cool feature is the logo here actually slides out for a lock here. So it is nice that you can lock it up, but I don't know how well that lock actually works. Then you have a vent there, you have two vents here, and then you have a vent on this side. Um, these vents are your main vents. These ones on the side here don't pull out as much air, so you're only really gonna get air coming from in here. Then up here we have our rear view mirror. I don't know if it's going to focus on it because it's a mirror. And then we have a black dash mat here. This is from Lindsay Racing. I can leave a link down below in the description for this. Highly recommend it. It really hides all the cracks you'll get in your dash. Uh, mine is just velcroed on. You can see the, the cracks here. But it definitely helps hide it and it definitely looks good even in a brown and tan interior. Then as we come down here um, we have the hazard switch and then the defroster and then our windshield wipers which might actually stopped working working on me the other day while it was raining. Then we have our headlight switch as well as a dial to control the lights on the dash and how bright they are. Then as you come underneath here, you will see the three pedals for the gas brake and clutch. And then you also see the hood release as well as an electronic hatch release there. Mine does not work and that's why it's pulled out. I'm currently trying to investigate my issue with it. Then as we look at all the gauges, you will see this is only on early 944. So mine has the yellow gauges as you see right here as well. But over here, we've got your gas 
gas level, your gas light, your parking brake light, your battery light, your headlight light, and then you've got your turn signal light and your oil pressure, you know, saying if it's too low or whatnot. And then you've got your coolant temp, and then you got your speedometer here. It goes in kilometers as well as miles. And then you got your odometer and trip meter. And then your RPM, um, get your tachometer uh, over here. Uh, it's really cool because it actually is in like reverse and upside down. Uh, and then you've actually got a miles per hour, or sorry, miles per gallon gauge up at the top. But it's just a little needle. Not sure how accurate that is, but this tachometer is very iconic to the car and it's very recognizable. And then if you move down here, you've got like a little trip reset button. Um, one really cool thing about these is that they give a very weird look um, when you look at it head on, but they're actually uh, concave. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'll post a picture of one of these looks like um, when you pull it out of a car, because it is not what it looks like when you look at them straight on. And then down here, I've got my Porsche mats. These are from Lloyd mats, but they unfortunately do not make them anymore, but you can get some really nice mats that say Porsche for these cars. Then I kind of saved the best for last. My Momo steering wheel with the hub and the Porsche horn button. I get tons of questions on this every day asking me where I got it, what it's called, everything. It looks fantastic in the car. I love it. It is a little smaller than the stock steering wheel, so it does block some of the gauges, but that is honestly worth it because I was able to bring the wheel out a little closer to me. I was able to really get a good grip on the wheel for once and my old one was ripped and it wasn't very good to handle and I, I really loved the wheel but it was just too much to redo it and I just couldn't justify it. So my girlfriend actually bought me this one for Christmas so I didn't even have to buy this all I had to do was buy the horn button, the spacer, and the adapter. But this is my Momo Prototipo uh, steering wheel. Very nice, highly recommend these. They feel amazing. They're all Italian leather. It's all made in Italy. I will leave a link to this and all the pieces with it down in the description below. Just another little nitbit here I thought I would go ahead and show you guys. I'm about six foot, six foot one-ish, and there is quite a lot of headroom in this car, thanks to the seats being completely on the ground. So I figured I'd just go ahead and show you guys. So if you are taller, six one, six, you know, whatever, I think you can fit up to like a six four person in here. Don't worry if you guys are like six four, six five, you definitely could fit in one of these cars. Also, just one last thing about the interior is if you have the door open like this while the car is running, there actually is a sensor right there that tells it that the door is open and it does beep at you, which is pretty cool. I'm unfortunately not able to do it because mine is kind of finicky and only works sometimes, but there is a door sensor in case your door is open. So that there guys is the full walk around of the 944. I'm super excited that I got to finally film this video for you guys. And if there's anything I missed, please let me know. I'll make sure to get it in a part two or maybe redo this video, but I'm pretty sure I got everything there just showing it off. I will have a video coming soon of like a buyer's guide to buy a 944. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. So that is all I have here for the 944 today, guys. And make sure to please click the like button and subscribe because I'm gonna have a ton of 944 content as well as a ton of car content coming in general. Also, if you guys came from my TikTok account, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm super curious to see that and I really appreciate everyone on there who follows me. So that's all I got here for the 944 today. Make sure you guys subscribe, like I said, click like, and thank you guys for all your support. See you next time.